All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Armchair Arm Dragger Podcast. This is episode number 26. As always, I'm your host, Ben Hersick. Now, this week, if you've read the title of the podcast, I'm talking about AEW. More specifically, what's wrong with AEW? I'm not, I'm just going to go and say this now, I'm not hating on the promotion itself. I hate on WWE all the time, and I still watch it. I, hate, I can hate on AEW and still watch it then. It's that simple. I can still watch the product, even though I think there are issues with it. That's the whole point of this, and I want to point that out before we get too deep into everything. Now, that being said, uh, as always, how I always start these off, the Twitter uh, mentions and shoutouts and whatnot, uh, you can follow myself on Twitter at Jero Solider. You can follow this podcast, the Podcast Armchair. You can follow All Things Combat, which is a website that I write for. We cover professional wrestling, boxing, and MMA on Things Combat. Or at Things Combat. Uh, we also have a merch store. We have hats, shirts, hoodies, uh, polo shirts, button-down shirts, jackets, water bottles. We have a lot of stuff. So the link to that will be in the description as well. And I write for The Cauldron, which is the whole reason I'm recording this on a Tuesday instead of the usual Thursdays. Because start, uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday on the 30th, we leave for Washington, D.C. for a convention that we're going to for journalism. So I will be out of town from Wednesday to Sunday, I believe. Maybe Monday, depending. Depends when we get back. All that thing. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, you can, uh, I'm the sports editor there. You can follow me. You can follow them on Twitter at CSU Cauldron. So with that being said, and all that out of the way, let's jump right into. What's the, the things about AEW that nobody's talking about? Let, let's start with something positive. They're getting tag team wrestling right. It's been, what, four or five episodes now? Something like that. And every show has had really, really good tag team wrestling. And I've been enjoying watching that. And when you have a tag team division that has the likes of Santana and Ortiz, the Young Bucks, Lucha Bros, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy... SoCal Uncensored, and Helico and Jack Evans, Private Party, uh, The Dark Order even, that makes sense, because you have talent everywhere there, including Best Friends, I forgot about Best Friends, and I'm a huge Beretta fan, you have all this talent already there, and that's a good start, that's a good base, and they've shown that right now, they've shown that they can be, they, they have a focus on the tag team division, that was something they set out to do from day one, they wanted a focus on the tag team division, because that's an area where WWE lacks. They don't. WWE doesn't focus on tag team wrestling, and that's not the worst thing ever. To be fair, you look at WWE. They have the Revival. They have the Viking Raiders, AOP, who have been injured on and off again. Same with Revival. That's kind of why they've had a lack of a push. Um, New Day's there, and a bunch of others that I'm probably forgetting. Heavy Machinery. They have good tag teams there. That's The base is there. The problem is, they just don't use that base. So it makes you wonder, you know, why even have this base if you're not going to do anything with it? And AEW saw that and said, we're going to focus on this. We're going to focus on tag team wrestling. And they've done a phenomenal job with that. And this is the one part where I feel like they've really shown that they can be they can hang with the big boys is that their tag team matches week in and week out have been phenomenal. It doesn't matter if it's the Dark Order against SCU. It doesn't matter if it's uh, Private Party and Young Bucks. It doesn't matter if it's Lucha Bros and Jungle Boy and uh, Marco Stunt in for the injured Luchasaurus. Now I look at it and that's great. They have a great focus on the tag team division, which is what you kind of need. You need to have focus in divisions. That's the only division they really have it in. And to be fair, when... You're telling me it's the new hot promotion on the planet, and the only thing they're doing right, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, the only thing they're doing right is tag team wrestling. That's not good. What about the main event scene? What about a mid-card scene? Where's the women's division? This is what AEW needs to ask themselves. They have questions that need to be answered. They have all this talent. They have amazing talent. And they haven't done anything with a lot of them. And it, you just sit there as a fan and you're like, you want to see your favorites succeed, yes. And like, yeah, they had the trials and tribulations of 
winning big matches, losing big matches, and everything in between. But you, you want to see them on TV at least. And with AEW in their talent pool, the same goes for WWE. They both have really deep talent pools. The problem is AEW only has one day of the week and they can only show off so many wrestlers. I guess technically two with AEW Dark, but that's that's nitpicking here and there. And I'm like, do they do you really count AEW Dark as a separate brand? Because that's not really what it is. So with WWE, with that same issue, they have... Let's see, they have Raw, they have NXT, NXT UK, that a lot of people kind of forget about, SmackDown. They have four different outlets, plus main event, that's five five different ways you can find your favorite wrestlers. Do a lot of them still, still not get TV time? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of them don't, which is a shame, but it, it is what it is. Now, I look at it, though, this, this talent grab, essentially, has worked in both ways. It's been good for some, and it's been bad for others. A uh, big example, you look at for AEW, Kaylee Ray. No, Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray. I did that before, too. You look at Kylie Ray. She was at Double or Nothing, and then she was gone from the company. And now she's an impact. With WWE, look at Ty Dillinger. He left, and now he's Sean Spears in AEW. The, these talent get upset, and they want to go places. Hideo Tommy and TJP also come to mind. Hideo Tommy's now Kenta in New Japan and killing it in Bullet Club. TJP's going around the independent scene. He's done a couple of shows with New Japan. He's currently in the uh, Junior Tag League tournament they're doing, which is fair enough. They're doing stuff still. But with all this talent, they're just hoarding it. Both companies are, to be fair. I'm being completely 100% transparent. I'm saying both companies have an issue. WWE has an issue because they have 200-some-odd employees that are wrestlers AEW doesn't have nearly as many, but it's still that they have so many, ta- so much talent. It's not even being on TV. We saw Brandon Cutler in one five-minute match. He's probably had a match on AEW Dark. I haven't had a chance to keep up with it, but he's probably been on there, and we've not seen him on TV since. There's, it's it's a really tough way with the talent depth because there's so many talented wrestlers in the world today. There's so much talent going around, which is the reason why I'm saying. I can see scenarios for Marty Skrull whenever his contract's up with Ring of Honor to stay with Ring of Honor, go to New Japan full-time, go to WWE full-time, or go to AEW full-time. Do I know which one's going to happen? Hell no, I don't. There's there's still also guys on the WWE payroll who are like teasing going to AEW. Randy Orton does it a little bit. Rumor has it that's just for his uh, contract negotiations in a couple months here, I believe. You have the Revival, who obviously want a way out. You have who else really wants a way, what really wants out? That's been vocal. Mike Bennett wants out. Mike Canales, for those that don't know. And you look at look at all three of those. Randy Orton, there's no way in hell he's leaving. He's been WWE through and through. Does the lighter schedule help? Yeah, but Randy also hasn't been seen before he fought Kofi. He hadn't been seen since WrestleMania, and after the Kofi feud, we haven't seen him until. Or actually have a match. We haven't have. I don't even think we've seen him have a match since the Kofi feud. It's been that long. We're gonna see him wrestle at Crown Jewel here. I don't even want to get to that topic at all. But he's gonna be wrestling at Crown Jewel here uh, in, on Thursday, so the day after this goes up. But that'll be his first match, I think, since the six man tag between New Day and uh, Randy Orton in the Revival. Also. Get well soon, Xavier Woods, uh, who suffered an Achilles injury in, on the Australian tour. I uh, hope everything heals up well and quick, and we see you well before the injury window is says you can come back. And the the talent depth in AEW, we don't see it to that big of an extent, where guys are just missing for months, and all of a sudden, oh, right, they're still employed. Also, it's been four episodes, five episodes, something like that. Now, I look at it, while talent depth might not be AEW's biggest issue, it's still something they should address a little bit, but also they really need to address the women's division. Now, I've gone on about this ad nauseum. I have a whole episode about it, Give Women, give women a Chance Again, or the, the Need WWE Needs to Post on Women's Wrestling. I forget what I called it. It's one of the previous episodes where I talked almost exclusively about women's wrestling in WWE. But with AEW, their women's division 
isn't off to the best start. Nyla Rose didn't look good in that Battle Royal. I'm still mad about that finish because the finish was really dodgy, and I hate dodgy finishes in Battle Royals. Uh, Riho and Hikaru Shida didn't really put on a good match. Riho and Nyla Rose were not really didn't really gel together. Britt Baker hasn't looked phenomenal. We haven't seen much of Jamie Hayter yet. Uh, Leva Bates was on AW Dark, and everybody hates the librarian gimmick. Uh, Nyla Rose is just not ready for primetime yet. They really have to hope that the top gaijin in stardom, in B Priestley, is going to come in and do work. Because right now, she is the saving grace of that women's division. We haven't seen a lot of B yet. And I'm not, I'm not going to call Britt Baker a bust. I was thinking about calling her a bust earlier in the week. She's not a bust. She's somebody we haven't seen a lot of before. This is her first big stage. And that's the go for a lot of these women. We haven't seen a lot of them before. We I, Outside of the UK, I can't think of anybody who's seen Jamie Hayter. Uh, B Priestley is just pretty well known. Uh, Britt Baker was semi-local-ish to the area of the of a northeast-ish wrestling independent wrestling i assume i know she's been around she did an nxt show where she got her wrist broken by Shayna baszler yeah uh there's there's still hope for that women's division but i'm not liking what i'm seeing we haven't seen awesome kong in a while i don't know if that deals with her glow contract or something along those lines but we haven't seen her Brandy Rhodes seems to be somewhat taking a focus now due to backstage shenanigans. And I don't want that. I don't want authority figures being involved in pro wrestling. I haven't liked that since day one. When, when done right, it works really well. Like, look at the Vince McMahon character. But look at how bad that's gone recently. Look at how Stephanie McMahon has come off. Shane McMahon. Uh, even Triple H at some points. I don't want them to start doing that with Brandy. Because everyone's going to be like, oh, you, you just hate AEW and you want AEW to fail. No, I want AEW to succeed. More competition makes competition better. There's a reason. Like, like say you look at the uh, you look at WWE during the Attitude Era against WCW. That Both companies are putting out fantastic shows week in and week out. AEW and NXT have both been fantastic week in and week out since starting this quote-unquote war. But I look at it. This is one area WWE has the leg up on them. I will take anybody from the NXT... Okay, I shouldn't say that because I would not take Tainara or Vanessa Bourne or Aaliyah. I will take most... Maybe Zia Lee to an extent too. I wouldn't take her. I will take most of the NXT women's locker room, and NXT UK for that matter, and put them against anybody in AEW. The NXT division, women's division, is going to run laps around them, except for maybe... Except for B Priestley right now, it seems. B Priestley is the only one that we haven't seen on TV yet, due to a tour in stardom, I believe. That she still she still has an opportunity to be a fantastic women's wrestler and be the saving grace of the division. I look at it, this, this is what we want to see. We want to see this competition, but when there's average at best women, women's matches going on, you're losing a demographic. You're losing the women's interest because you're not putting on good women's matches. Yes, they'll still go and still be entertained for, with... Whoever they go with, they go by themselves, their friends, their people they're in relationships with, whatever. But still, they will not be as interested because the women's division is not as good. The women, women's wrestling matters again in pro wrestling. Women's wrestling is making a movement. It's made a movement, and WWE capitalized on it. Am I sad there's no evolution to this year? Absolutely. I loved the show last year. I would have loved to have seen a second edition. But you look at it from an in-ring standpoint... WWE is so far ahead in their women's division. They have so much talent. Even Dana Brooke can go now. And for a long time, everyone was like, Dana Brooke's the worst women's wrestler in WWE. She can go. I am dead serious. She is a very talented women's wrestler. Is there still time for AEW to fix the women's division? Yes, absolutely. There's still time for them to address a lot of these issues. They're only about a month into having actual shows running weekly. And there's There's still other issues too, like, I look at it, the mid-card, or a better, better way to phrase it, what mid-card? There is no mid-card right now in AEW. AEW has the championship picture, the tag team picture, the women's division picture, and everybody else. Right now, you look at the main event. The main event's seen itself right now. You have Chris Jericho, Cody Rhodes, uh, John Moxley, Kenny Omega... 
Pac, and Hangman Page. That's six people. There's still a slew of the men's men's roster who are just there. Jimmy Havoc, Darby Allen, Jack Evans on Helico, the third member of FC, uh, SCU, whoever doesn't win the tag team championships. I'm pretty sure uh, Christopher Daniels won't be won't be wrestling for just a little while here. But if it, if it's him, that's not the tag team championship member. Uh, then you have Christopher Daniels in that mid card that has nothing to do. MJF right now doesn't really have much. He's too. He's too. What's the word I want to say? He's not unproven. It's too early to put main eventer next to his name, I think. At least in his AEW run. You don't have any mid-card at all. Why is there no mid-card title? Why is that the case? You have to look at it from a fan standpoint. In WWE, we are told to care about the Intercontinental title because it's the workhorse belt. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes, not so much. It doesn't help that they haven't booked Shinsuke Nakamura to do anything recently. Or anything important. But you look at it, that belt matters. The U.S. Championship has mattered for years. AEW, nobody cares about that mid-card division. Nobody wants to even look at it because there's nothing to fight for. There's no point in even having a mid-card division. Right now, you can just run a show with six guys, two girls, and you're in a tag team division. That's pretty much what they have. You see the same six people week in and week out in the main event scene. We've seen we've seen Page and Omega team up against Pac and, uh, Pac and Moxley. We've seen Pac and Moxley go one-on-one with Omega and Page interfering. We've seen Cody and Jericho week in and week out. We've seen the tag team division week in and week out. We've seen Riho or Britt Baker and against somebody week in and week out. That's it. Where's the mid-card? AEW doesn't have a mid-card. NXT is two hours as well. NXT's mid-card division is loaded. You have Roderick Strong, Keith Lee, Dominic Dijakovic, Isaiah Swerve Scott, Velveteen Dream, Matt Riddle, it seems like, Cameron Grimes, Tyler Bate, Pete Dunn, Damian Priest. That's 10 people right there already. Literally, there's 16 different people who could be seen to challenge Roderick Strong for... His uh for his North American Championship here at Takeover War Games here in a few months, or in about a month maybe. I don't even know when Survivor Series is anymore. I think it's like middle of November. So as soon as we get back from Saudi Arabia on the thirty first or the first of November or whenever the hell they land, straight into Survivor Series build. Let's go. But still, there's there's a focus there. There's something there for that. There's so much talent in AEW. That they need something to fight for. You can't just have a mid-card division and be like, eh. Jim, Jimmy Havoc is a phenomenal wrestler. He's maybe the best progress champion of all time, and I will defend that to my dying days. Jimmy Havoc had a phenomenal run as progress champion. He was the most overlooked wrestler for so long in his career. And he finally got to the mountaintop, and he would not let go of that stranglehold. And he did it by any means necessary. There's a reason he's a hardcore, he's a modern day hardcore legend. And eventually, who knows, maybe one day he's in the same breath as Mick Foley, Terry Funk, and all the other hardcore icons of the, of the past. You look at it though, you have a talent like Jimmy Havoc, you have a ta- talent like Darby Allen. Fans love Darby Allen. Jake Hager's there now too. Sammy Gravina. You have talent there. There's so many good wrestlers. Why are they just sitting there with nothing to do? That is my big question right now. Give them something to fight for. Give them a mid-card championship. When you're teasing an announcement like they did on Monday, and you your first hint is that it's not a video game, and your second hint is it's not a second title, or it's not another title, or a new title, or whatever word they used, that disappoints fans. Your big announcement was that you're running a show January 1st. at your In your home. whoop de do. Congratulations. What do you want? A pat on the back? That is not how you get fans excited for shows. That's not how you get fans excited, period. You want to see them do something different. You want to see them have something worth fighting for. When it's six guys in a main event scene, how is somebody supposed to break through? You can't you can't tarnish Pac's record right now because Pac has got probably a lot of sway backstage. Kenny Omega's tr- record is starting to turn around because he's beaten Joey Janela twice. Moxley hasn't lost a match yet. Cody hasn't lost a match yet. Jericho hasn't lost a match yet. The other person in the main event scene that I'm forgetting already, Paige has got one win, and that's in a tag team match. He lost to Pac. He lost to Jericho. 
he's one and two. He is one and two. You're telling me that a one and two page should be in the main event scene and be in one of the most important feuds in AEW right now, while Jimmy Havoc, who arguably has a better one, two, and one record compared to Pages, is not. Darby Allen, who challenged for the championship and almost beat Jericho, technically, is not in the main event scene. But yeah, Adam Page is. And this is nothing against Page. Page, like I keep saying, these guys are all phenomenal wrestlers. They're so great. But when you're telling me that wins and losses matter, I would argue that Havoc and Allen and even, oh God, what's his name? Somebody else, too. Havoc, Allen, well, let's just say Havoc and Allen for now. Those two have a better win than Hangman Page. Page beat a Moxley, he beat Pac after Moxley walked out on him. In a two-on-one handicap match then. Havoc won a triple threat hardcore match. Allen won against Havoc. Those are better records than, those are a better one and two record than Adam Page has. What, where is this mid-card title that you guys need to have? When one of NXT's best selling points is how deep its mid-card is, they need to develop a mid-card, AEW needs to develop a mid-card of their own, so that way they can compete mid-card for mid-card. And I also want to put, uh, talk about the main event scene and how I'm not very excited about it, and there's a main reason why. Of the six people I said in that main event scene... Five are former WWE employees. Chris Jericho, we all know his history there. Cody Rhodes, we all know his history there. Uh, Pac, we all know his history there. John Moxley, he's got a long history in WWE. Kenny Omega, former, re- he was formerly employed. He was in the Canadian Developmental Territory. I forgot the name of it. I don't really want to look it up. I'm going to look it up anyway because that is important. I want to say it was Stampede, but it wasn't Stampede because I know that's Dumb and wrong. Kenny Omega. Uh, He's not a Japanese professional wrestler. Uh, This is... Oh, professional wrestling career. Premier Championship Wrestling. Formed at TNA Excavation... Where is it? Might be have been might have been Millennium Wrestling Federation. Uh, search on page WWE. Deep South. That's where he was. He was in Deep South. Okay. So you have five former WWE wrestlers in some way, shape, or form in their career, all on the same roster, all all the main event scene, with Adam Page being the lone exception. You're saying you don't want to be WWE. You don't want to be compared to WWE. You want to be something different. Why are five of the guys in your main event scene former WWE employees? Yes, they're. Yes, one of them had like a a year, uh, a year job there, a one year job. Cody's a well known name in professional wrestling. Jericho's linked to WWE for so long. He's he's one of the the guys there essentially. Moxley had. So many career highs in WWE, along with career lows, to be fair, yes. But you're telling me that your focus is going to be not sports entertainment. You have four sports entertainers right there. Four of the best sports entertainers, even. Why are why are you not doing what Impact should have done and is now realizing and it's doing? It is making stars. They've made Sammy Callahan. They've made... Tessa Blanchard, Rich Swans rose back to prominence. The Rascals have been phenomenal. Even Brian Cage to an extent. Outside of Lucha Underground, I did not know much about Brian Cage. And then he went to Impact and showed that, oh, he's not just there to be a, a TV drama incorporated with wrestling monster. Focus on making new stars. You have Darby Allin. You have Joey Janela. You have Jimmy Havoc. You have Brandon Cutler. Scorpio Sky. You have all these phenomenal wrestlers. Luchasaurus when he's healthy. Jungle Boy. Make new stars. Make us care about new people. Don't just use the name value of everybody else. 
Don't use the name value that Cody, Jericho, Pac, Moxley, and Omega bring. Focus on the guys we don't know. Focus on the guys that are being underused already in AEW. Where has Sean Spears been? Where is Sean Spears? Peyton Royce came back to TV this week. Are we going to see Sean Spears return to AEW just because his freaking wife was back on TV now? Is that how this is going to work? If that's so, that's stupid. You're saying that you want nobody to compare you and WWE, yet you're making yourselves be compared. You're making, and this is the other, the last complaint that I have with AEW right now, the last issue that I really have. If you're, I don't, I don't mind shots back and forth. WWE has not mentioned AEW once since Sami Zayn and the electric chair or whatever the hell Corey Graves thing was that one week. AEW, in its first four weeks, has mentioned WWE at least twice. When the fans were chanting, We the People, Jericho said, that's a dumb, stupid creative that's now dead. And then Hager goes out and does, does it for his Bellator fight where he gets a no contest result. And then, last week, Jericho said there's no glass wall between us talking about WWE, essentially. And that is... Here's the thing, you're telling us not to compare you to WWE, yet you're making yourself be compared to WWE by mentioning them. Don't mention it. Get it all out of everything. Who cares? You guys want to be yourself? Go ahead. Do that. Be your own company. Don't bring up your competitor. Don't bring up a rival. There's a reason that I say New Japan is the best pro wrestling in the world. They don't care. They're like, we'll still mention WWE. Pro Wrestling Noah, All Japan Pro Wrestling, we'll mention them all. We don't care. We're going to focus on just putting out amazing wrestling. And that is why New Japan is so much better. They could care less about WWE, they could care less about AEW, they could care less about every single wrestling promotion in the world. They just want to focus on their own thing, and that's how it should be. Don't let others influence your product. That is exactly what they do. Granted, yes, I would love to see... Uh, what's it? I'd love to see Tanahashi Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom. I would love to see Moxley face somebody, Suzuki possibly. I'm still I'm not putting Moxley back in the US picture, the US title picture, simply because I think Archer and Sonata might be a thing there, maybe question mark. I don't know. I don't know how Wrestle Kingdom goes yet, and I'm trying to book it in my head at the same time as I'm complaining about AEW. <laughs> That being said, AEW is not bad. AEW has things it can improve on, though. Nothing is perfect. Maybe Who knows? Maybe next week I'll complain about all the issues I have with WWE. Maybe actually, yeah, that'd be a good idea because I have nothing planned for next week yet. I just gave myself an idea. Thanks, me. But I look at it. This is what AEW can be. It can be a pro wrestling company making new stars making the fans find new favorite professional wrestlers like they all did with uh, like they did with us and Luchasaurus. All pro wrestling fans now who have seen Luchasaurus wrestle love Luchasaurus. It's that simple. You do that, fans get interested. You do that, fans will care. There's a reason AEW's numbers are dropping. Is it because they're losing a casual audience? Yes, and I'm I kind of fear that there's a bigger drop off coming here at some point. And I'll tell you right now, both NXT and AEW are hoping that the World Series does not go to Game 7. Because if the Nationals win tonight, it's Game 7 Wednesday night. Both AEW and NXT are hoping for a Houston Astros win tonight. Yes, real sports are going to affect still. And I know people are like, oh, back in the day it didn't matter between professional sports and uh, sports entertainment, wrestling, whatever you want to call it. You still saw ratings drop. Ratings still drop during that season in certain markets, yes. Other markets, it would go up. Other markets, it would go down. When you look at it overall, yeah, the numbers probably still increased because it was a time of, you know, angst and all that jazz, I guess, essentially, in pro wrestling. That was when pro wrestling was entering its teenage years. Now it's an adult, and it's kind of matured a little bit, but there's still that little immature side to it. This, this company can be big. But I'm thinking they need to address these issues first. They need to address the women's division especially. They need to address the main event scene. And they need to address a mid-card title and making their own stars. 
They need to focus on those four things, and then we'll see what happens. I'm only saying this because it's a week out, and I needed a topic for this week, too, to be fair. I figured it'd be a little bit shorter to complain about AEW than WWE. That one I could probably rant about for three hours. That's not my plan, but I could. So, and another thing, too. A lot of questions have been going around about Tessa Blanchard's contract length or contract situation in uh, Impact Wrestling. Here's what I'll say. Right now, I guess spoiler because the show hasn't aired yet, but it'll have aired by the time this episode goes up. Uh, Sammy Callahan's your new Impact Wrestling Champion. He beat Brian Cage in a steel cage match. And the first person to congratulate Sammy Callahan, not OVE, Tessa Blanchard. Blanchard wants that Impact Wrestling Championship. Now, if Blanchard wins that, I was listening to, uh, I was watching a Call the Holly video, where if she wins that, what's she do next? Where, what's the next step? Where do you go? Because she'll have literally done everything and ev- any, anything and everything possible in that promotion. So the only thing would be her being a two-time world champ. The only thing I could see happening is she takes her, she leaves, being a free, becoming a free agent, and then it's going to be an all-out bidding war between AEW and WWE. If you if you were asking me right now which way if I was Tessa Blanchard and I would sign with AEW or WWE after my Impact Impact Pro Wrestling contract is up. Because of the women's division and the focus on it, I'm going to WWE. AEW has not proven anything in the women's division. There's still a lot of work to be done there. When that work is done, and by the time Tessa Blanchard's contract's up, we've heard varying lengths, so we don't really know when that is. But when it's up, and she has to make the decision, maybe AEW will have fixed its women's its women division issues. And maybe we'll see an increase there. Who knows? But that is all I have for today. I complained a lot for a half hour. I apologize that this may have seemed like a bit of a down episode. Uh, it's just the topic I picked, to be fair. And now now we're about a month into AEW's run. I figured it would be a good idea to sit back, look at the show and the roster itself, and look at the issues that it has. Because like I said, nothing's perfect. Except for Mr. Perfect. Other than that, nothing's perfect. So... It's always it's always good to enjoy stuff, but it's also important important to pick out things that you didn't like with everything. For example, like the past week, I went to go see Joker and Zombieland Two. Well, yes, I enjoyed both movies, and both are pretty good movies. You can still sit there and pick out little issues here, there, and everywhere. You can do that in pro wrestling too. You can still sit down and enjoy pro wrestling and watch it, but you see a lot of complaints. I complain about it on Twitter when there's something I don't like. But that's really what it is. Most of the time now on Twitter anyway, when I do the live coverage, I'm complaining about not having those flags for sale in WWEshop.com that are in the background of NXT. That's my main complaint right now. I want those freaking flags. I will buy like seven. Maybe not seven. I'll buy a lot. Probably. But anyway, like I said, that is it for this week. Complaining about AEW is now over for maybe a few months. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe they'll... Pick it up and be the best pro wrestling product I've ever seen. I don't know. That that still belongs to New Japan. For me, at least. But anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, as always, like I end these podcasts, you can follow me on Twitter at Chiro Solid, or you can follow this podcast, the Podcast Armchair. You can follow All Things Combat, which is a website that I write for where we cover professional wrestling, boxing, and MMA at Things Combat. Uh, I have a couple articles on the work still. I really haven't had time to work on them, unfortunately. I'm probably going to get a little time around Thanksgiving, so they might come out in December-ish. We'll see. Um, I might get some work done on them next weekend. Not this weekend coming up, but the weekend after. Um, You can also follow The Cauldron, which is the newspaper that I write for, and I am the sports editor of over at CSU Cauldron. Uh, We are going on a trip to Washington, D.C. for a convention that we'll be attending. Uh, We leave tomorrow on October 30th. I'm not back in town until November 2nd-ish, depending on time and everything and traffic. Uh, What else? What else? What else? All right, the All Things Combat merch store. Uh, You guys, we have merch. You can buy our merch. We have hats. We have shirts. We have hoodies. We have jackets. We have water bottles. We have mouse pads. We have a lot of stuff. Go buy it. Uh, Link to that will be in the description below. Uh... Thank you guys so much for listening. Leave a like if you really liked what you heard. You can subscribe if you want. The button's down there. 
Help me get to 10 by the end of the year, maybe. Who knows? Tell everybody you know. Tell your mom. Tell your dad. Tell your pet goose. I don't know. I'm playing a lot of Fire Emblem, and that's gotten me back into looking at gaming memes, and I've been seeing a lot of untitled goose game memes. It's funny. I enjoy that goose a lot. He's probably my favorite goose. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, yeah, leave a comment if you want. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be back next week with maybe me complaining about WWE. Hopefully that one does not go for three hours. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you next week. Maybe I'll have some inform- some stuff about the uh, Washington, D.C. trip and everything about that, too. All right, thank you guys for listening. See you next week.